Hi everyone, Fenris Models here, and in this video I wanted to show you how I built and painted the Coca-Cola themed GB Racer from Lindbergh in 1 32nd scale. The build started with me removing the pieces from the sprue tree and placing them on the instructions. The physical placement of the pieces helps to make sure that not only will I not forget any pieces, but it also helps me to visualize how things will go together before I start assembly. Think of it kind of like a pre-dry fit, dry fitting in a way. It also gives all of the pieces a place to live, so to say, while I clean the parts and it prevents any possible misplacement during the build. Once everything was free from the sprue tree, I could begin cleanup. Since this kit was originally tooled in 1958, there was quite a few spots that needed some sort of cleanup. All I did primarily was use a hobby blade to scrape down any seam lines, flash, or sprue tree stubs that needed cleaning. It's fast, efficient, and if you're careful not to dig into the plastic, I find it to be a better alternative to resulting to multiple grits of sanding sticks. Probably the worst spot was the seat. To be fair, there wasn't terribly much detail for the interior of this kit, so there wouldn't be much attention drawn to the cockpit, but I wanted to make sure I gave my best with the kit nonetheless. Then it was time for assembly. Assembly was fairly straightforward, the instructions being clear, concise, and easy to follow. First, I made sure to dry fit all of my parts. Dry fitting is essential to ensuring a kit goes together as smoothly as possible. I found that almost 90% of fitting issues can be resolved by just spending the 10 to 20 seconds dry fitting ahead of applying your adhesive. As a wise man once said, don't blame the kit, dry fit. Once satisfied with how the parts sit, I run a thin bead of Tamiya extra thin cement along the join and hold it in place until the cement has set. Before I could close up the canopy, I needed to paint the pilot. I did find it quite interesting that unlike most aircraft models, this kit did not have you working on the interior until about halfway through the process and only after closing up the fuselage halves. Admittedly there wasn't much detail to work on in there, so this approach wasn't too bad, but I found it curious all the same. I started by giving the pilot a coat of Vallejo Model Air Camo Medium Brown, product 71.038. Then I picked out details such as the fluffy collar of the aviator's jacket in model air white and his face in model color flat flesh. This was then coated in Citadel's Reichland flesh shade and then dry brushed all over with model air USAF brown 71.125. I could then install the seat and pilot and finish assembly. With the canopy installed I could mask and prepare for painting. Because the frame was a separate piece than the clear plastic, masking was relatively easy. A piece of Tamiya masking tape was placed over the canopy, and I simply ran a toothpick along the indentation where the two plastics meet. Using a sharp hobby blade, I gently made an incision between the two. This way, if I went too deep, the frame would hide any cuts into the clear plastic. Now that we're ready for paint, I hit all of the panel lines, rivets, and other details in Vallejo Model Air NATO Black 71.251. Because this kit has raised panel lines, I knew that I would have a difficult time with the panel liner, and so I decided to prioritize this pre-shading to bring those details out. Then the whole kit got a coat of Model Color 70.953 Flat Yellow. You can see here that the paint fought me tooth and nail the whole time. Something about this yellow just wanted to keep my airbrush clogged. Note to self, use more thinner next time. Once that dried, I masked off where the red should be. Interestingly, the kit included raised detail lines for where this needed to be, so I used a similar technique to canopy masking. I took a toothpick and highlighted the line under the tape, and with a sharp hobby blade, I carefully cut along that line, keeping the blade up against the raised detail. Using Vallejo Model Color Flat Red, I first applied a light coating over where the color transition should be. This was to make sure that there wouldn't be any paint seepage under the tape, and after that I continued to block out the rest of the plane in red, being sure to keep a light hand to allow that pre-shading to show through. I could then remove the masking tape once it was dry.
Finally, it was time to pick out the details. The engine was painted in a mix of Vallejo model metallic air steel and mecha color gunmetal at a ratio of 12 to 3 silver to gunmetal. This may seem quite specific, but with Vallejo's dropper bottles, it makes measuring mixes quite easy. Simply squeeze the paint out one drop at a time and count the drops. Then the prop and wheels were coated in NATO black. Once everything was dry, I hit the whole model in Mr. Super Clear Gloss Varnish. The gloss coat makes it easy to apply decals and minimizes the risk of unwanted decal silvering. Because these decals were from Cartograph, they were quite nice to put on. Simply soak them in warm water for 30 seconds or so and then you can slide them off of the backing paper and onto the model. I then use a cotton bud and roll it across the decal to squeeze out any excess water trapped underneath. One thing I'm sure you'll notice is that I did take some liberty with the scheme. Um, since this was a fictional scheme anyway, I wasn't too stressed about it, but I figure I should, it should be mentioned nonetheless. Um, the decals on the wings were meant to go on at an angled bias, but I didn't like how it looked, and it also didn't really play nicely with the gap between the wing and the ailerons, uh, so instead they were applied straight and square with the wing. Well, as square as that can be called anyway. So, I have found an interesting problem with the decals. Um, as I showed with the, the uh, painting part, there is actually a ridged line right here for that little kind of um, point, which you know we got on the uh, instructions here. However, if you notice, it's on this line where the kind of that cock piece, piece was, which means, and again, like it's above the 12 which should put it here, not here. So in order for Coca-Cola to be line in line with the 12, I would have to lower this, but then we have red on red and we won't be able to see it. So I'm making the executive decision to just raise this up. I'll, you know, cut the decal there the way you usually do. Um, so it's kind of setting higher than the 12, but yeah, that was, that was, that's an interesting um, difference. So yeah. Anyway, something to be wary of. And finally, we can remove the canopy mask and call this one done. So here is my finished Coca-Cola themed GB racer in 132nd scale from Lindbergh. For being a tooling from 1958, it really wasn't that bad of a kit. My main complaint, I think, is the misplacement of that line where the yellow and red meet on the side of the fuselage. But to be honest, I don't think it's all that much of a deal breaker, um, at least not on this kit, where the scheme was fictional anyway. Besides that, everything came together nicely and it built up quite quickly. This can easily be a weekend build, or even a one day build if you so desired. And if you're someone who collects Coca-Cola memorabilia, especially the various Coke themed model kits, um, then this kit is absolutely one to pick up. So what are your thoughts on this kit and how I did? Leave a comment below with your thoughts, and while you're down there, make sure to like, subscribe if you haven't, you know, all that standard YouTube practice. Um, and let me know which kit you would like me to see me do next. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping to have um, a Machining Krieger kit ready for you all in the next couple weeks, uh, but we'll see how that goes. A massive shout out to Cali Bear for becoming the first gift set tier patron over on Patreon. I am extremely grateful for your support. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, maybe check out this video next. YouTube has picked it out just for you, and it would mean the world to me for you to stick around. Until next time everyone, stay safe and keep modeling.